Welcome to the Hawthorne Studio. Today, we will be diving into an advanced guide on how to build complex custom fragrances from scratch. This guide will give us a base understanding on how to create unique fragrances for your perfume line. It will also work for body sprays, soaps, room sprays, candles, or anything else that uses fragrance. This is a part 2 of a two-part tutorial. If you haven't already, please watch part 1 before watching this tutorial. Part 1 goes over IFRA safety measures and guidelines, as well as the tools needed to get started. I also provide a natural base formula to use as a carrier for our fragrance in Part 1. Today, we will be using a traditional perfumer's alcohol as our carrier. These alcohols are designed for perfumery and range from 200 proof to 190 proof. For this lesson, I will be using a mixture of essential oil and fragrance oils, but feel free to use whichever type you prefer. If you want to use 100% fragrance oils or 100% essential oils, you definitely can. You will follow these same steps regardless of what you choose. To get a better understanding of how to mix fragrances and which ones to mix, we need to understand what makes up a fragrance blend. Fragrances are made up of three categories, top notes, middle notes, and base notes. The top notes of a perfume or fragrance oil are called the head notes. These are very strong scents that we initially perceive when smelling a perfume or oil. They are very assertive and fresh scents like citrus notes, green notes, and aldehydes. On the flip side, the top notes are our first impression of the fragrance, but they are also the ones that will dissipate the fastest. It is recommended to use 30-50% to 50 top notes, but this number is flexible. Middle notes are known as the heart of the fragrance. The middle notes usually consist of 30 to 50% of the perfume or fragrance. These scents are more rounded and mellow and start to reveal themselves right before the top notes start to dissipate. Floral, spicy, and fruity notes are the main components of the middle notes. Lastly, we have the base notes. These notes are the foundation of the fragrance and bring depth to the overall scent of the perfume or fragrance. These deep and rich scents usually consist of witty, amber, balsamic, resin, and musk type notes. Base notes will last the longest and it is generally recommended to have 20% of the fragrance as base notes. Keep in mind the percent recommendations are completely flexible, it is only just a starting guideline. When it comes to blending fragrances, it is better to measure them with weight rather than drops. The reason for this is simply consistency. Each oil will weigh differently, so the best way to replicate a recipe is to weigh it rather than to count drops, especially if you're making a large batch for selling. No one wants to sit and count 300 individual drops for a large order. Today, we will be weighing our individual oils on a 0.001 precision scale. I will be measuring in ounces, but it's better to use grams on a scale that can read 0.001 grams. My scale doesn't do that with grams, but it does with ounces, so I'm settling for ounces. For my demonstration, I will be creating a warm yet juicy floral blend that is a mixture of essential oils and fragrance oils. This recipe will be as followed. 5% tangerine essential oil, top note. 40% freesia fragrance oil, middle note. 15% white tea fragrance oil, middle note. 10% rose fragrance oil, middle note. 10% sandalwood fragrance oil, base note. And lastly, 20% vanilla fragrance oil, base note. This ends up totaling to 100%. The formula I'm showing you is how I personally choose to divide my complex oil blend. The reason why I'm doing it this way is so I can easily convert my formula to create a larger batch of products. You can also use this formula to create 16 ounce bottles of your custom recipe in advance. That way it will be readily available for future projects, whether you want to use custom blend for lotions, perfumes, candles, and so forth. This will be a lot of math up front, so I do apologize in advance. Today I am making one ounce of custom fragrance oil using the recipe we just discussed. Since I am making one ounce of fragrance oil total, I will multiply each percentage of my recipe by one ounces. For this recipe, 5% tangerine multiplied by 1 ounce is 0.05 tangerine. 40% freesia multiplied by 1 ounce is 0.40 freesia. 15% white tea multiplied by 1 ounce is 0.15 white tea. 10% rose multiplied by 1 ounce is 0.10 rose. 10% sandalwood multiplied by 1 ounce is 0.10 sandalwood. 
20% vanilla multiplied by 1 ounce is 0 0.20 vanilla. If we add all these ounces together, it will total 1 ounce. Let's go ahead and measure out these numbers on a scale. Just counting drops probably sounds like a good idea to some of you now that math got involved, but unfortunately, if you do count drops, you will end up with a recipe you cannot replicate, or worse, it will not smell the same once you convert it to a larger batch. Human error is inevitable when counting drops. Now that that is done, I'm going to mix all of these oils together and stir. Since I made 1 ounce of fragrance, I am going to put 1% vitamin E oil as an antioxidant so our oils can have a longer shelf life. 1% of our total product, which is 1 ounce, is 0 0.10 ounces of vitamin E oil. If you are using only fragrance oils and you are not using essential oils or you are using a fragrance oil that already has essential oils mixed into it, you do not need to use the vitamin E oil, you can skip this step. However, if you are using essential oils, you do need to add the vitamin E oil. We are going to want to transfer the fragrance oil recipe into a dark clothes container, and then we want it to sit and stew for 4-7 to seven days before using it. This will give the oils time to mingle and bind together. If you smell it periodically through the next few days, you will notice that the fragrance oil scent will begin to change and it will become more complicated and true to scent as the days go by. After waiting 4-7 to seven days, your oil is ready to be used in any application you desire. At this point, they can be used for candles, body sprays, room sprays, soap, perfume, and so forth. I am making a perfume today using traditional perfumer's alcohol. I'm going to be making this perfume strong, so I'm going to be using 25% of my custom fragrance oil. My perfume bottles hold a comfortable 0 0.70 ounces. 25% of 0 0.0 ounces is 0.175 ounces, so we will be using 0.175 ounces of our custom fragrance oil. Let's add our fragrance to the bottle. For the carrier, I'm going to use 75% alcohol, so I will need to add 0.525 ounces of perfumer's alcohol which is 75% of 0 0.07 ounces. Add your carrier to the bottle next. Once the mixture is measured and mixed, you will need to wait 4 weeks for the fragrance oil to bind to the perfumer's alcohol. If you use the perfume too soon, the fragrance will not be true to scent and it will have a heavy bitter alcohol aroma. Please be patient and wait up to 4 weeks before using your perfume. If you want an easy, all-natural recipe that is alcohol-free, check out part 1 of this tutorial in the description box below. If you are interested in purchasing these unique perfume bottles in today's video, check out my website at hawthornecompany.com. I will be launching March 2021 with wholesale empty bottles. Finally, to apply the perfume, simply spray it on your pulse points. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to follow my Instagram at Facebook at Hawthorne Company, and don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button and notification bell down below. Thank you so much for watching, bye loves!